So right now, we're sitting in a huge television studio. Sometimes they call these sound stages, but really it's much the same thing, except um, in some cases you'd be shooting film in a big room like this, and other times you'd be using electronic video cameras. So what I'm sitting on right now, I'm sitting on a huge, what we call scissor lift, that's designed to raise and lower a big platform so that my avatar, my little representational character, uh, can actually get up and work on the lighting up on this big grid of pipes up here. But right now, instead of doing that, I'll just have him stand up and we'll walk him over to one of the studio cameras. And I have complete control using the arrow keys on my computer to turn him around and have him look at various things. So right now, for example, you can see several things. You can see a studio camera and a teleprompter on the front of it. Now I could bring that in for a little bit of a closer look here. There's the teleprompter on the front end of the camera. But uh, all of these shapes that you're seeing are all uh, created by by starting with, with basic simple shapes like boxes, cubes, spheres, half cubes, uh, donut shapes called toruses. And everything you see in here has been created by those. I mean, even look at the handle on the camera here. That's the steering handle for, a, for what we call a camera pedestal that will allow the camera to go in straight lines in any direction. You have to just turn the steering wheel to line up with the direction you want to go. Well, that's created from a donut shape. This is a cylinder, the base of the, this is a cylinder, and this is a special shape that I found in the primitives in Second in second Life, and I'll show you what those look like. If I go into the create mode, what you see over here, I'll just drag it over to show you. These are all the basic shapes I can create. So you see here is the basic box, the basic pyramid. Uh, you have three-sided and four-sided pyramids. Well, I'll just make a, I'll make a cylinder right now for you. I just click on the, on the cylinder and click anywhere in my world with the magic wand, and there's a cylinder. And that cylinder usually will default to a wooden shape uh, covered with a wood texture. But if I want to, I can rotate it to any angle. I can move it in any direction. So I can float it up in space, or I can make it right, go down right into the ground. And then, if I want to as well, I can texture it. I can change the wooden texture to any other texture from my library here. For example, I've got bricks. I know it may look a little strange, but I could apply a brick texture to this little uh, cylinder, and now and that should show up, I think, to you, that you can see it now has bricks on it. So that's how the wall of this building was created. And then for most of the metal surfaces, I've got a kind of a rough metal surface on things like the sides of the camera and so forth. See, we have three cameras in the studio, and over here is the one that's on air. I can tell that because it has the big, bright, glowing red light on it. The other cameras have uh, tally lights that are switched off. So now, if we go over and look at, well, what is this camera shooting? And we go over, and we can, we can actually have all of my students come in here. Uh, it would get kind of crowded, right? You'd see avatars all over the place. Like if I brought in 20 students, there'd be 20 avatars here. But we could take them in turn, same as we do in our real studio, and say, look at the uh, viewfinder here. Here's what's on the monitor. There's the shot of the studio that we're seeing. And why do we have a green room anyway? And the reason for that is if we walk over to our on-air monitor, let's see what the actual viewer is seeing. The actual viewer is not seeing a green room. They're seeing the set pieces that we have in the foreground composited into a 3D rendering of a virtual set. And that's all created in a, a very fancy computer workstation. So that, that virtual set can not only be shown in behind our real set, but as we move our cameras, if we have the right kind of virtual um, set workstation, as you move your cameras, the virtual set view rotates as the real view rotates and the two track together. So no matter what you do, you can't destroy the illusion that you're seeing something real. And if we had people come in and sit down at the set, they of course would appear, as long as they're not wearing green. If they were to wear a, a green element, you would see right through that and you see the virtual set. So you have to be careful not to walk in wearing a green tie or a green sport coat. Then outside here, we have a big camera crane, which is drivable. You can actually get in and drive this crane around to various locations. And then the operator would sit at the top end of that, where you'll notice here, if I take off and fly, 
you'll see that I can actually fly higher and lower, and I can fly over and take a closer look at what this top end of the boom looks like. You see there's a film camera on there, and there's a nice little seat for somebody to sit and operate the camera. And they then, of course, would be taking pictures of this old country town that we haven't quite got completed yet. But there's going to be a saloon in here. In fact, I think I've already got the word saloon posted on the front door. Let's go see if I do. Uh, this tree is not really meant to be here. That was part of our little demo today. So uh, what I better do is um, I'll just uh, delete that tree because it would kind of look strange to see a tree growing in a country western town. But yeah, we've got weeds in the street, and there's the saloon. Got some swinging doors. I haven't built anything inside yet. Eventually I'll have a bar in there and an old piano and so forth. So this is simulation for education. You know, it, the only purpose for doing this, uh, and this is being done in cooperation with the three other schools of SAIT, the only purpose is to simulate our labs in a virtual world so that we can reproduce things that are more accessible to our students, things that we couldn't afford to buy, like this camera train, a student can go and get some experience with, or they can have a bigger space, perhaps, than we can afford to, uh, to provide in the real world. So eventually, we'll be inviting our students in here and taking them around and having them learn from this. Right now, I'm walking along some camera dolly tracks, um, because this is another way that film is shot. You lay out your dolly tracks, and then you have a camera dolly, as seen here. Somebody will walk up behind and grab the handle. The camera operator will get on, and then as we're taking the shot, somebody will be wheeling the camera operator along the tracks.